Well, welcome everyone to our first webinar in 2023. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Donna Cohen, and I will be presenting the session today. I've been involved in the BPCLE initiative since it started in Victoria in uh, mid-2008, and I remain passionately committed to the initiative's core philosophy of continuous quality improvement in the context of education and training of health and social care professionals. Now, before we get underway, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. So firstly, I hope that everyone has uh, checked their audio and uh, is hearing me clearly. In terms of your microphone, currently everyone but me is muted so that we avoid excessive background noise over the line. And I am able to unmute you for the Q&A section later. So today's presentation will, um, will last for about 22 minutes. We'll then have the Q&A session. If you have a microphone and want to ask a question, you can use the hand raise icon in your control panel. And I'll invite you to speak, unmute you while you ask the question, any follow up uh, before returning you to the muted state. Alternatively, you can type your question in the Q&A section at the bottom of your control panel, and I will read out any questions that are submitted by participants before responding. So today's webinar is going to provide a very brief introduction to the Best Practice Clinical Learning Environment, or BPCLE, framework. I will then run through some of the benefits organizations can expect to achieve as a result of implementing the framework, and very importantly, talk about what implementing the framework means in practical terms. This will be followed by an introduction to the online implementation tool called BPCLE tool that's been specifically designed to make ongoing implementation of the framework a feasible proposition. I thought it would be uh, useful to provide a very quick history of the BPCLE initiative because Organizations are understandably reluctant to engage with things that are brand new or relatively untested, neither of which is the case of, with the BPCLE framework. Indeed, as you can see from this first part of the summary, the initiative started nearly 15 years ago in mid-2008 with the initial drafting of the framework. So the first project started with research to see what was already out there, which wasn't much. There were a couple of discipline specific frameworks in nursing and occupational therapy, but nothing along the lines of what the Victorian Department of Human Services wanted, which was a framework that would apply to all health professional disciplines in all settings in which clinical education and training take place. So we consulted with university clinical education coordinators, hospital clinical educators and education coordinators, and of course, learners at both undergraduate and early graduate level to find out what the essential elements are of a high quality clinical learning environment. For the first project, we only worked with the hospital sector and the seven largest disciplines in terms of the numbers of undergraduate student placements, namely medicine, nursing, OT, physio, podiatry, social work, and speech pathology. The second project, which was in 2009, was a validation project to take the framework that we had developed and see what stakeholders thought of it. During this project, we also included all the other health professions and all service settings that conduct student placements. Interestingly, we didn't end up having to change very much, mainly issues around language usage. But the six elements of the framework were validated by all stakeholders and the core content was signed off as appropriate. In 2011, we conducted two projects. The first was to develop a performance monitoring framework, which is basically the BPCLE indicators. And the second was to develop the BPCLE resource kit. Then in 2012, the department wanted to conduct an implementation pilot. And so we went out to 11 health services across the state to trial the approach that we had developed. This included large metropolitan health services, regional and small rural health services, aged care, community health, and GP clinics. Now, the pilot worked very well, and so we proceeded to make an online version of the implementation tools, which is what is now known as BPCLE tool. 
This was rolled out to Victorian public health services in 2014 and then to registered community health services in 2015. In 2018, Victoria started implementing the framework in community-based social care services, and then in 2020, other jurisdictions started to come on board. Over the last 18 months, we've had something of a re-engagement with the BPCLE initiative in Victoria, as health services emerge from the worst impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and look to refresh their clinical learning environments and their systems and processes for organizing, managing, and delivering clinical education and training. Now, one line I jumped over in this summary was the publication in 2018 of data that revealed objective, measurable improvements in Victorian clinical learning environments following implementation of the framework. This analysis was made possible because of the large amount of clinical learning environment related data collected in BPCLE tool over the preceding three years. And later um, in this webinar, I will put a copy of that publication in the chat section uh, if anybody is interested in downloading it. So that is a potted history of the BPCLE initiative. As you can see, it is not new, but it is unique. To this day, the BPCLE framework is one of a kind, not just in Australia, but internationally as well. It remains the only framework applicable to all health professional disciplines and all settings in which clinical education and training activities take place. And it is the only framework with a bespoke and comprehensive implementation tool. So this next slide summarizes the content of the BPCLE framework on a single page. By the way, the whole written version of the framework isn't much longer. It's only about three pages in total. The framework comprises six elements that are the essential underpinnings of a high quality clinical learning environment. And each element is then defined in terms of a set of high level objectives that explain what is meant by that element. So, for example, when we look at element one, an organizational culture that values learning, what we mean is education is valued, educators are valued, learners are valued, and so on. So there's a total of 28 objectives distributed unequally across the six elements, with element three having the most and element six having just the one element, uh, one, the one objective, I should say. Element one, um, which I'll come back to later when I'm demonstrating how organizations assess themselves against the framework, uh, as you saw earlier, has six objectives as listed there. Now, as I said a moment ago, the BPCLE framework is not a particularly long document, and I have to say it's not rocket science. Most people involved in clinical education and training who read it say, Yep, that captures it exactly. We've known this at an intuitive level for a long time, and it's great that someone finally wrote it down. So what is the benefit of implementing the framework if everyone knows all these concepts anyway? Well, even when we know what the ideal is, that doesn't mean that we regularly review our routine practice against those ideals. So the main benefits of implementing the framework come from conscientiously and deliberately reflecting on our routine practice and comparing it to the ideals set out in the framework to provide an evidence base for continuous quality improvement. So what are those benefits? Well, the direct benefits for healthcare organizations include fairly obviously an improvement to your clinical learning environment, efficiencies and improvements to the activities and processes that are associated with education and training, better relationships between you, the health service, and your education provider partners, and improvement of your overall organizational learning culture. There are also some indirect benefits for healthcare organizations, and these include organizational learning opportunities, both across and within professions, an increased understanding of the costs and the workloads associated with education activities, which are, in my experience, usually underestimated. A greater awareness of the processes associated with delivering education and training. And finally, greater involvement of staff in review and planning activities, resulting in greater ownership of those activities by those staff. 
There are also benefits for your education provider partners, and these include greater consistency in the quality of the learning experiences that their learners will receive throughout their program, improved relationships with you, their health service partners, a greater awareness for them of how their resources can best be used to support you, their placement provider partner, and opportunities for benchmarking and research using the extensive data that's collected within BPCLE tool. So I want to move on now to talk about what we mean in practical terms by implementing the BPCLE framework. As I alluded to a moment ago, the benefits realized by implementing the framework come about through conscientiously and deliberately reflecting on our routine practice and comparing that to the ideals set out in the framework. And this is achieved through a plan do review quality improvement cycle. The plan step involves firstly, assessing current arrangements against the framework, and then using the outcomes of that assessment as the basis for development of a quality improvement action plan. It's important to note here that self-assessment in this context is organizational self-assessment, not the assessment of individual staff members. The due step, the due phase, then encompasses action plan implementation, and the review phase encompasses the various activities associated with indicator monitoring, namely collecting, analyzing, and reporting data against an appropriate subset of the 55 BPCLE indicators. So this slide, uh, this next slide shows the three phases of the quality improvement cycle as we expect them to play out in a series of tasks. The plan phase encompasses three tasks. The first is a gut feel preliminary assessment where staff consider overall how well they think each of the 28 objectives of the BPCLE framework is being achieved. This is followed by a detailed assessment where staff drill down into the detail of how those objectives are achieved in practical terms, reflecting on the inputs, activities, outputs and outcomes through which the objectives are realized. The final task in the plan phase is to develop an improvement action plan based on the outcomes of the two assessment tasks. So then the tasks of the do and review phases happen in parallel. The do phase involves implementing your improvement action plan and monitoring that process. And at the same time, the review phase involves selecting the indicators that will be monitored, creating data collection tools, collecting data, and finally reporting it. It is important to ensure that indicators are selected quite early in that process so that data collection tools can be developed in time for baseline data to be collected. And it's also worth noting that organizations are not expected to monitor all 55 of the BPCLE indicators. Indeed, just as the outcomes of the assessment are the basis for deciding what to include in your quality improvement action plan, the assessment outcomes also inform which of the 55 indicators would be most appropriate for your organization to monitor. Now, when we were designing the implementation protocol, we recognized that health services would probably need help working through these tasks. So we set out to create tools to help wherever possible. And this slide shows how that translates into BPCLE tool. Everything shaded in gray is part of the online integrated tool. The only things you can't do in the tool are things you wouldn't expect to be able to do. So obviously we can't implement your improvement action plan for you, but we do provide a very user-friendly action planning tool to allow you to easily create the action plan and monitor its implementation. Likewise, we can't create your data collection surveys and registers for you or collect the data from your stakeholders, but you can select which indicators you plan to monitor in BPCLE tool, then you can collate the data that you have collected in the tool and finally report the data. Now, as I said a moment ago, BPCLE tool is a fully integrated toolkit as shown here in this graphic. The preliminary and detailed assessments integrate directly into the action planning and indicator selection tools on the assessment side or the assessment module of BPCLE tool. And that assessment module is integrated with the monitor indicators module through the indicator selection step. 
What I want to focus on for a few moments is this detailed assessment step, because this is where the conscientious and deliberate reflection on routine practice actually takes place. And that is how organizations derive the benefits of implementing the framework. Now, when we were developing the implementation protocols for the pilot project 10 years ago, we came up with a novel approach that we termed MAP-enabled experiential review or MIR. So MIR uses interactive graphical models or maps of process systems to provide an agenda, if you like, for structured conversations amongst teams of staff. The technique is designed to tap into the rich vein of knowledge and experience of the staff who actually do the work of everyday business processes to allow a more holistic review of how well those processes are being implemented in reality. The technique encourages team-based reflection, which promotes information sharing and organizational learning. And this all provides a solid foundation for development of what is known as collective competence, which is the shared understanding of work processes and systems that staff contribute to. So now I'm gonna show you how MIA is used in the context of organizations assessing themselves against the BPCLE framework. So when we were developing the framework in the early days in 20, uh, 2008, 2009, we, were, um, we developed logic maps for each of the framework elements. Uh, and here's an example of one. Now the logic map shows in general terms, the inputs, processes, outputs, and outcomes that need to be in place for the objectives to be achieved. So this logic map is for element one, which as I pointed out earlier has six objectives and these are the six purple diamonds that you can see here. So in BPCLE tool, these logic maps are presented as interactive tools that allow organizations to rate how well each of these map items, which are called nodes, N-O-D-E-S, nodes, um, how well each of those nodes is currently being achieved. So when you click on a node, so I'll click on the one that's highlighted there in pink, a budget for educational activities. When you click on the node, it opens a dialog box that always looks something like this. As I say, this is uh, an input, a budget for educational activities. Clicking on the more info button reveals further details about what the people conducting the assessment should be considering as they rate this node. There is always a rating question and a rating scale, which is a five point Likert scale with two additional rating options, one for does not exist and one for not applicable. The rating scale for each node is unique to that node, but it's always a five point Likert scale with two extra rating options. The general idea is for this assessment to be conducted as a team exercise so that you get input from all the people who are involved in the various aspects of organizing, managing, and delivering clinical education and training. Now, the rating card allows you <clears throat> to tally the votes registered by individual session participants here on this side of the card. And you can also record comments in the notes section here. Assessment sessions thereby become a sort of collective learning and ideas sharing exercise, whereby staff contribute to the rating of each node based on their own knowledge and experience. So once all the participants have registered their own rating, the group will arrive at a consensus rating, which is then reflected graphically on the map. So if an organization rates a node with an above average rating that's equivalent to a, a five or a four in the Likert scale, the note the node in the map gets a green tick. If the node is rated average or below average, that is equivalent to a three, two, or one rating in the Likert scale, the node gets a red halo with an exclamation mark. If the node is rated does not exist, the node gets a black halo with a cross. And if it's rated as not applicable, it's grayed out in the map. So from an organization's perspective, as you can see, when the assessment step is completed for each element, you get this sort of instant snapshot of where things are going well and where there are issues that need to be addressed. Of course, there's little point in identifying where things could be improved if you don't translate that information into action, which is why the mere assessment step in BPCLE tool is linked directly to the action planning tool. 
So going back to our card, once the group has decided on its consensus rating for the node, this save and next step button becomes active. And clicking on that button will take you to this screen where the group can decide whether the node should be added to the action plan or not. Now, BPCLE tool makes a suggestion about that, but the final decision is always up to the group. If the node is added to the action plan, the node card will appear in the to-do column of an action plan for that BPCLE element. So this is a very easy to use Kanban style action planning tool in which cards can be dragged between the to-do, in progress and complete columns. When you click on a card to open it, you can add tasks, assign tasks to individuals, set due dates and priorities, add comments, attach documents, and generally keep track of progress as you implement your improvement action plan. And here's an action plan that is underway. And you can see that various cards have been moved to the in progress and complete column. There's a little progress bar at the bottom of the card showing how many of the tasks have been completed. There are due soon and overdue flags, as well as flags for priority. Now, there's a lot more I could show you about the features and functionality of BPCLE tool, but my main objective today is to let you know that implementing the BPCLE framework in your organization without any external assistance is an entirely feasible proposition that will help you get maximum benefit from the exercise. The tool has many resources available to users, including uh, all documentation, which is accessible through the quick links dropdown at the top of the website, uh, there are video tutorials providing a step-by-step how-to guide for all functions within the tool, and also an online manual called the BPCLE Knowledge Base, which is your written guide to all things BPCLE. The team at Meerkat also provides a comprehensive onboarding service for organizations that will ensure your success with this initiative. We can provide as much or as little assistance as you require or prefer. So this includes resources to inform key stakeholders about the initiative, uh, training key individuals in how to use BPCLE tool, uh, we'll even facilitate your initial assessment sessions while your staff get the hang of the process. We can also assist you to work through your indicator selection and your action planning steps if you'd like some guidance from the experts for your first time through the process. So uh, there are three key take home messages that I would like you to take from today's webinar. Firstly, the BPCLE framework is a validated best practice guide that is relevant to all health professional disciplines and all setting types in which clinical education and training activities take place. With this framework, you have a homegrown world leading resource to drive organization wide and potentially health network or health system wide improvements in clinical education and training activities. Secondly, in BPCLE tool, we have an online framework implementation tool that assists any health or human service provider to apply continuous quality improvement principles to uh, your education and training activities. BPCLE tool has been designed to guide organizations through framework implementation without the need for any additional assistance. And indeed, the vast majority of the more than 250 Victorian and Tasmanian organizations using BPCLE tool have been doing so without any external assistance. Finally, and most importantly, we have seen measurable improvements in the quality of learning environments in the Victorian clinical education and training system as a result of organizations implementing the BPCLE framework using BPCLE tool. Uh, I don't have time today to go through the data analysis that supports that conclusion, but you are welcome to download the peer reviewed publication in the handout section if you would like to find out more. And I'm about to put that up in the chat. So before I take questions, I'll just also let you know that I am more than happy to provide briefing presentations to individual organizations interested in implementing the BPCLE framework. This is quite a complex topic, and I recognize it can be difficult to take what you've learned in today's webinar and pass that information on to other colleagues who need to be consulted about implementing a new initiative. Uh, I'll also um, provide all attendees with a, a link to this, uh, the recording of this webinar, and you're welcome to share that with your colleagues as well.
So um, while people think about any questions that they might have, I will just go about um, uploading that uh, document into the uh, into the webinar chat. So uh, just bear with me. And um, please, if you do have any questions, uh, pop them into the Q&A and I will be very happy to um, to answer any of those. Uh, okay, so I've actually got one question that has come through from Joel. Uh, <clears throat> Joel is asking, do you conduct assessments across the whole organization uh, all at once or in individual units or departments? Okay, well, you can do it either way. Um, our recommendation is that it is better to do this as a whole organization where you have um, all disciplines that are involved in education and training uh, working together on their assessment. And the reason for that is because it is an interprofessional working environment. Uh, you have to share the space amongst all the different learners who are there in that environment. And so there's a lot of value in sharing the insights from the different disciplines um, and getting those all together in the same conversation. Having said that, there are a number of um, hospitals particularly that have said, we're just going to focus on nursing in the first instance, or we only want to do this in podiatry or whatever. And so they have tended to work just within a department or within a particular discipline. But you get the most value from this when it is done as a whole of organization, um, multi-professional exercise. So thanks for that question, Joel. Uh, then we've got another question. How many people should be involved in the assessment sessions? Okay, so um, basically, how long is your piece of string? Uh, there isn't a fixed number about that, but having said that, I will uh, add the caveat that the more people that are in the room, the more complicated the conversations can become and the longer the process, the assessment process can take. But we encourage you to include in the room people who are involved in the various different aspects of organizing, managing, and delivering education and training. You'll have administrators, you'll have education coordinators, you'll have educators, um, supervisors, mentors, buddies, uh, preceptors. You, you, All of those people are good to have in the room because it is good for them to hear the different perspectives of the other people who are involved in that process. And so, um, Having more people in the room actually shares the learnings, increases the opportunities for organizational uh, learning. And, um, and yes, uh, I would encourage you to, to have as many people in the room as is feasible. I would also point out that it is possible to um, do these sessions on Zoom. I have recently been working with a number of organizations, both in Tasmania and in Victoria, who wanted me to facilitate sessions for them externally. And we did this on Zoom um, and we had, in some cases, 15 people on Zoom and it actually worked extremely well in that platform. So you don't all have to be able to be in the same room at the same time uh, in order to complete your assessment exercise. Um, OK, so another question. I've got two more questions and I'll just quickly answer those before we finish. So how often do you need to repeat the assessment for all of the elements? Well, uh, we recommend that you should complete your whole assessment of all six elements every year and a half to two years. Uh, that is long enough for a couple of things to have happened. First of all, for you to have implemented uh, the tasks of your action plan from your earlier assessment and to give those things a chance to be embedded and to see whether those things are actually making a difference to uh, people's qualitative and quantitative experience of the clinical learning environment. So 18 months to two years to do a complete review. On the other hand, if the first time you go through, you find that one of the elements is particularly troubling, you have a lot of issues or whatever, and you decide to focus on that element, you might then decide to run another assessment just against that element in six months or nine months or a year's time uh, to see, again, whether you have your intensive work on, on those aspects of your system have made the, the kinds of improvements that you're looking for. 
Uh, does the framework work for all disciplines? Uh, yes, it does. So as I mentioned earlier, um, during the validation uh, project, we went out to all health professional disciplines that, uh, that deliver some kind of uh, work experiential placement or clinical placement or rotation. And, um, and, and all of the, the different disciplines said, yes, this is uh, appropriate for us. Having said that, we do recognize, particularly when you're looking at different setting types and also sometimes with different disciplines, there are things that are in BPCLE tool that are more applicable to, um, that are more applicable to some um, uh, disciplines or to some setting types than they are to others. And so you are always able to answer not applicable to a node in the map if that particular thing is just simply not relevant to you. So uh, there is a mechanism there to allow you to weed out the things that are not applicable, but in general terms, yes, the framework does work for all disciplines. Um, so look, thank you very much for attending today. I hope that this is of interest to you. Um, my contact details are up there on the screen. And uh, if you decide that you would like further information, or as I say, uh, a presentation to other um, of your colleagues and other stakeholders, I would be more than happy to do that. So um, I will draw this to a conclusion and thank you very much for attending today.